I am here again. Um, I am just going to wait a minute to see if anyone joins us. So I just wanted to uh, get started and be here when anyone else got here. Um, at any rate, let's see, is it 8 o'clock? It is 8 o'clock. <laughs> In fact, let me refresh the group and make sure I'm showing up in it so I can see what you're seeing, which is smarter. There we go. <laughs> okay. Um, so, let's see what we see. Today we are going to be carding fleece to spin it at another time. In fact, I will be spinning it at the... Small Business Saturday event at 156 Bridal Way in Paramus. The fleece that I am, and there you can come and see me spin in person. I'll be doing demonstrations throughout the day. The fleece I'm spinning is this. It is 100% alpaca. It is all from one alpaca. He is black and white. His name is Patch. And in fact, I will um, post a picture of Patch after I'm done with the video in the first comment because he's adorable. And I do have a photo of him from the farmer. He lives with a farmer out in Blairstown and I work with that farmer to, that farmer has his alpacas sheared every season and twice a year. And I work with him to go get the fleece and uh, well, he allows me to come purchase the fleece from him and choose the ones I want. And then I spin yarn from it. I get it as, raw blankets which is when an, alpaca, when an alpaca or any fleece animal is sheared it's sheared off in one big sheet one big blanket um, it doesn't harm the animal in any way the skin is all still intact on the animal in fact alpacas have to be sheared in the spring otherwise they will overheat through the summer and die so it's actually to their benefit to be sheared and then i can go they store it in big bags and pick up a fleece it is dusty and grubby because alpacas like to roll around in the dust and hay and everything else they can find. And I bring it here. I wash it a lot and then rinse it a lot <laughs> and then let it dry. And then it is like this. And this is when I cart it. Um, and when I am done carting it so far, what I have carted has come out in yarn like this. You can see it's black, white, and gray. That is all from Patches Fleece, no dyes. And I just did that by carting it the way I wanted it to and then spinning it and then plying it to be some of it is kind of a barber pole. You can see the black and white. Some of it is melded together. Um, there is no gray on this alpaca, so any gray you see is black and white fleece mixed together. Now, when I first got this fleece, I did not yet have a drum carter, which I'll show you in a minute. I had hand carts. These are a little tedious, but I'm going to show you how it works. So, hi Diana, hi Leah. Thanks for watching. Um, <clears throat> so, when I first got it, actually let me move my drum carter out of the way a little bit. So I don't knock into it and I can have the fleece in front of me. I would choose some black. Whoops, it likes to grab it. They're very, very sharp tines. And I would put it where I wanted it on the carter. And some I did all black, some I did all white, some I mixed. Let's get some white on this one. And each time you do this, you don't put a ton on because then it gets kind of messy when you're trying to get it from one to the other. And the idea with this, with carding fleece, is to get the fibers all lined up nicely for when you're going to spin it so that when you draw it into the spinning wheel, it's much easier and everything's lying nicely and you don't get weird bumps and things. Take the other carter and do this until it takes a while and some good muscle strength. I was building up my uh, biceps with this and probably triceps and shoulders and God knows what else. And you can see already, whoops, let's get some of that on there. Sorry if I'm off camera doing it, I don't mean to do that. You can see when it goes to the other one, it's already laying 
a lot nicer, a lot more organized, and a lot flatter. But what I would do is go back and forth actually three times. You can see how this is a little tedious. This is how they used to do it before there were any drum carters back in the day in the colonial times. And if you've ever been to one of those colonial village uh, villages on a class trip, this may have been what you've seen and maybe even tried. I seem to remember for some reason when I was a kid on a class trip actually trying carding some fibers. Um, it's a vague memory, so I'm not sure if I dreamt it or it really happened. But uh, at this point, we'll say I did it. Um, and God knows now I've done it more than enough. All right, so I have now more or less gotten this three times. And then what I would need to do, let's see if I can hold this up and do it, is roll it down off the carter like this. There, you can see it now. All right. And this is what is called a rollag. It is basically a rolled up, lined up, carded bit of fleece. It takes a lot of these to make a skein of yarn. So... I met on Facebook a very nice woman in Alaska who was selling her drum carter. It's manual, not electric, but it's a heck of an improvement over hand cards. Um, and this is, let's turn you so you can see, this is my drum carter. Whoop, without dropping you out of the holder. That is it there. It's got a handle over here that spins. It turns the big wheel, the little wheel, and the fleece gets drawn in between. Now, in order to use this, and let's make sure you're close enough to see. You know what? I'm going to put a little higher up. All right. Will that work? Is that too high? That's probably too high. Then you're staying down. So... Hopefully you can see what it's a matter of tilt. Sorry about this. You know I'm still getting used to this whole live thing. All right. So what we do is we take the fleece, which I put over here, fluff it out, and lay it out on the quarter. And believe it or not, you actually want space to show on the bed of the carter before you draw it in. So it's like this, I will show you. See that? You can still see the bed through. That's all you put on for now. And then I turn it and it starts drawing the fleece through much faster than the hand cards. And you see it gripping through and onto the big drum. And then let's add some more. Now when I did it with the small versions, I was able to place the fleece pretty precisely where I wanted it on the hand cards. So that when I was spinning it, I picked certain ones. Some I did all black, some I did black and white, some I did all white. And I was able to pick specific ones and line them up the way I wanted so that I could really play with the shading and I'm going to try and do a similar thing with this so that once I'm spinning it from the bat which is what we call what this is going to become sorry about that versus a rollag I'll be able to play with the shading as well oh I keep wanting to say colors but it's black white and gray so we'll go with shading and you can see how it's going through. And you'll see some of the shorter, fluffier fibers end up on this smaller drum. And that's okay. That's the stuff that's going to be discarded. Um, and if it is discarded, it's no big deal because I don't waste anything anyway. It will end up um, either being felted because, whoop, sorry, don't mean to drop you. It'll be felted into animals or balls or some other kind of thing, or it will end up as uh, stuffing when I make pillows or stuffed animals or something like that, because I do still knit. Um, I haven't had that much time to knit, 
because I've been a spinning crazy person. And we're putting some more and more and more. And you want it to get pretty thick on here. Because it's easier to actually get off that way. And of course I realized that I forgot my flicker brush and my um, awl. Which... Thankfully, Eric is in the house and not outside this time while I do this. So he's going to go get them because they're in the bedroom, in the bag with the uh, Navajo churro that I was carting last night. <laughs> Thank you, hon. <laughs> it's good to have somebody else in the house sometimes. All right. We're still spinning, 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 spinning. And it does get to a point where it's a little fluffy. Out, and that's where I'm going to use the flicker brush actually to kind of tamp it down. So, give me one second, bear with me. And he's being good and walking around the other way. <laughs> and now he knocked you over. That one wasn't me. So, ha. Huh. All right, still trying to get the black over by the black and the white over by the white so that when I spin it, I can differentiate and distinguish what I want where. All right, let's get one more roll of this into the, pulling it in. And then funny this thing is actually it's from the 80s is 100% metal well except for these wooden parts here and the handle um, which is really unusual to see I other than this one I've never seen one that's all metal like this and it's got a bike chain driving it basically it's kind of nifty all right this is my flicker brush it is a small very sharp tines brush. I showed this during the last video or the first video, I'm not sure which, but what I do is I continue turning and this, I go with the grain on the tines. The tines are actually tilted, if you can see from here. They're tilted back. So when I'm cleaning out the uh, drums, I go this way. But when I'm working with it, I go with the grain of the tines, and it actually beats down all the fleece into the drum tines so that I can fit more fleece. So let's do that. Let's see, I want some good stark white. So some of this is very, very white. Some of it's very black, and some has gotten mixed together already just while I was washing it. Fluff it out, fluff it out. It's so soft. I love spinning alpaca. The only thing that I've spun that's softer than alpaca is Angora from my bunnies. Um, mohair is very nice to spin too, but it's different. It's smoother and silkier and less fluffy and soft the way that these are. Let's get some black on this side. And then spin it on in. Make sure it catches. You can kind of hear the bicycle chain probably. There it is. Whoops. So if I had a table dedicated to this, I would actually bolt the uh, carter to the table, but this is our dining room table, so I'm not doing that, especially not before Thanksgiving. Um, now, I'm not going to do the whole bed I would normally do, because this is going to get crazy if I do that. Um, so this one's going to be a smaller bat than I would normally have. Let's tamp this down again, and then I will get this off of here. It actually requires two times through. To be nicely prepared for spinning at least some people do more than that 
And sometimes you want to do more than that, depending on the fiber. So now I take an awl, just a plain old awl from down in the workshop, actually, that I've appropriated, and start picking out. Some people actually use, and I probably should at some point get a porcupine quill for this purpose. It's a little easier on the mat that the tines are in, and the carding cloth is what it's called, the tines plus the mat, um, is probably the most expensive part of this whole mechanism, this whole uh, tool. So. <laughs> I forgot to ask you if it's a thing. All right, now, you can see what I'm doing here. I'm rolling it off as I go. Normally, I have a reed placemat that I would use, but that's also in the bedroom, and I didn't mention it to Eric <laughs> when he was nice enough to get me the rest of the stuff. So I'll leave him alone for that, with that for now. Oh, he's going to get it anyway because he's awesome. All right. You can see I am rolling it down, though. And as I go, if there are any kind of sticking... I'm pulling them off, any of the strands of fleece. Thank you. <laughs> he pitched it. <laughs> Thank you. And I apologize for the fact that no animals have gotten involved in this video. I know everybody likes them better than they like me. <laughs> so, and with good reason, because, you know, we have crazy mutts. And they're pretty awesome. Oh, hi, Jack. He came to visit me. Really, he's interested in the alpaca. More so than he is in me. So, every time I come home with a new animal fleece in a bag that I'm going to be spinning, the dogs go insane because it's a new smell. And it's all I can do to get the bag into another room before they stick their heads in it. Um, usually, they get their heads in it. Okay. Now, this is, in essence, the beginning of a bat. It's a thin, small bat, but it's the beginning of a bat all the same. And it's so soft, trust me on this. Um, now, what we do is sadly tear it apart and run it through again. So, I'm gonna put that on that side because that's smaller. Just kind of in the middle. Whoops. And I'll do part of, you know what, I'm just going to do that for now, because normally if it was one color, I would just split it in half, or in thirds or quarters, depending on how much fleece there was, and I would, oops, sorry about the shaking, I don't mean to make y'all seasick, and I would send it through in bits until it was all back again, but because this is two colors, I'm still going to do it in basically halves. So there's pretty much all the black and a little bit of the white going through. And then I'm going to put, split up the rest of the white. You can see I just tear right down it. It goes very easily without losing that black. Put some of the white in for a second go through. Hi, Carol. I see you there. <laughs> and this goes on through. And I'm trying to keep it more to the one side than the other because I do want, when I spin it, to be able to differentiate between the two and choose what shade I'm getting at the time. All right, this is going to require, I'll put you here for a second. Now I tamp this down again. Alright. Now the remainder of the white. Oop, there's some stray pieces floating around. They're getting back in. They're not escaping. Not if I have anything to say about it. Going back down, and then you can see. Oops, sorry about my thumb. 
from here. It's going to get drawn in. <clears throat> and see it's already a little bit gray on that side. That's fine. This particular bat will be more black and gray. And then I'll do some in white. I'll do some in black. I'll do some more mixed. And that way I have a choice to pull out of my bag when I'm at the event and I'm spinning it. I am not going to spin any of this in advance of the event. This is all going to be spun at the Small Business Saturday event. Uh, I made an event in the group so that anybody who wants any information will have it. It is um, in Paramus. I believe it's 156 Bridal Way. Fun if you're on Facebook, correct me if I'm wrong. And uh, he's not, so he won't correct me, but... I will post a link to the event afterwards. I am bringing my spinning wheel to the event. We will be selling yarn and candles and the woodworking stuff and um, my knitted items. And then uh, I will be doing spinning demos throughout the day, which, of course, I would like to do anyway because it's getting work done. Well, in there. Plus, I love spinning. It's addictive. It's really addictive. And it's kind of meditative, if I haven't said that already. All right. Now, now that I actually have the mat, this is it. It's actually a little sushi mat. <clears throat> what I do is I fold the fleece over it, and then I use it to roll the fleece off of the drum. It makes it stay a lot nicer and a lot flatter and separates it so that when I roll it open, it's easier to do so. So you can see I still have to get the bits up, which is fine. Once I'm spinning it, it all works. <clears throat> and See, this is because it's a much thinner bat than I usually do because I don't want to keep you here for the next two hours. You're welcome. <laughs> so it sticks a little more than a nice thick bat would. So at some point I will do YouTube videos. There's also a Reef Botanicals YouTube channel. And then I can edit and I can show everybody what a full-size bat would be. Um, but in the end, it still takes several to make a skein of yarn. I have, I usually use four bats in a skein of yarn. Um, the Rolags, these little fluffs, took a lot more. Um, Eric can attest, I was sitting here carding and carding and carding and carding and carding and carding, and carding before I even got to spin. And then I got one half of a skein of yarn done and had to go card everything for the other half, and it was a little tedious. Okay. I'm back. Hello. Because this is all spun now. I mean, it's uh, carded. It is not spun. It will be spun. And I can get this all together. Got to find the end. There we are. side two and aha there we are all right and that it ends up pretty long because it ends up the length of the circumference of the drum and this is a skinny fine little bat of black and white alpaca from an alpaca named Patch, and I thank him for his fleece. Um, he is adorable. When Eric and I went to the farm, we met the farmer, we met the alpacas, we got to feed the alpacas treats. They loved it. <laughs> we did not get to pet them because they were a little skittish and not that kind of alpaca. What? Oh, <laughs> apparently the dogs heard the T word and now want T-R-E-A-T-S. And honestly, I can't even spell it because our dogs can spell. It's a little frightening. We can't spell that. We can't spell... Oh, you. Yeah, what we now call the back 
Um, I'm afraid to say it because they'll make a mad dash um, for the door. And for a second, I thought Connor wise up to what I was saying. <laughs> anyway, you're a little. He did. He's headed to the back. Thank you for being with me. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, ask. Um, invite your friends, and I will probably be going live from Small Business Saturday while I'm spinning all this awesome patch fleece in much more than I just carded now, because I'm going to card up as much as I can and uh, have it there to spin. And I uh, will see everybody, and hopefully I'll see you all at the event, and you can come and we can chat and hang out if you're local. If not, then we'll chat on Facebook, and thank you. Bye.